Hey YouTubers, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the spur sprocket and the needle cage bearing on your steel MS250 chainsaw. And here's the chainsaw I'll be working on today. And what I have here is the new spur sprocket. The old one, as you're going to see, is very used over here and damaged, so it's time to replace it. And what's going to happen sometimes when the spur sprocket is worn out, the chain's going to be hard to move around because it's not fitting properly on the teeth of the sprocket. And you might hear noises like this. You can tell there's a bit of binding going on. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the two nuts over here and you're going to need a 19 millimeter socket. Now I'll just pop the cover off. Now I'm going to flip the saw on its side like this. Now I'll remove the bar just by lifting it up like this and just pulling it right out. And here's the spur sprocket on the saw now. You can see it's got damage over here or wear. And here's a closer view of it. So when it's worn out like this, you know it's time to replace it. And what I have now is the new one just to compare it to the old one so you can see the difference. Now what you need to do is remove the E-clip over here. I'm just going to use a nice flat screwdriver for this. I'm going to keep my fingers behind the clip so it doesn't fly off on me. Then I'll just twist and it's going to come right off. And now you can remove this washer. And now just grab the sprocket and lift it right off. Now just remove the roller bearing. The reason why I'm replacing this bearing is because there is a bit of play when the clutch sprocket is on over here. And if you're going to replace the sprocket, you might as well replace the bearing as well. Now I have a new needle cage bearing over here, and it's part number 9512003-2260 from Steel. And before I install my needle cage bearings, I like to put a bit of lithium grease on them. Not much, just a little wee bit. You can also just put a little bit inside as well, and then stick it on the shaft. You don't want to put too much grease because it can go in the clutch here and cause slippage. Now I'm going to install the new spur sprocket. The part number for the sprocket I'm using today is 1123-640-2074. And this chainsaw has a dot .325 pitch. And you have to make sure you get an identical replacement sprocket. Some have a 3 8 pitch and some have a 325 pitch. So make sure that you match up the exact sprocket when you go to get a new part. Now another important feature of this sprocket is you're going to see a small notch over here. Now this little notch is to go in the pin that turns the worm gear for the oiler pump. And if you look on top of the sprocket you're going to see a little notch over here. That's to tell you that this notch here is right here underneath the sprocket. So what you need to do is look inside here on the outer part of the clutch down inside behind it for a little pin and here's the pin right there you can see it protruding so now when you install the clutch drum you want to make sure that you line up the notch right over the pin the pins gonna go right inside over here so when the clutch turns it's gonna make the oiler pump work so now I'm just gonna line everything up I'm gonna make sure that the notch and the pin line up as well here And when you've got it in properly, there's going to be a substantial space here between the groove and the sprocket over here. If your sprocket is sticking up any higher than this, you may not have it lined up properly. Now at this point, I'm going to reinstall the washer over here. And I'm going to reinstall the E-clip. Sometimes you can just push it in with your finger. If you can't, just use a pair of pliers. Just like this. Always keep one finger on the clip in case it flies off. And that's it. It's all installed. Now if your saw is really dirty, it's time to clean it. And while you have it apart, you want to make sure that the oiler hole here is nice and clean, that there's no debris in there, and that everything else is clean. Now on this chainsaw, I'm also going to replace the bar today. And here are the specs on the bar. This is the part number over here, in case you want the same bar. It's 16 inches. It's a 325 pitch. 
it's a 50 gauge space in between the bar over here. So right in here it's 50 gauge. Now I'm just going to put the chain on the bar like this, wrap it all around. If you're putting back your old bar on your saw, make sure that the oiler hole is clean over here. That's really important. If this is clogged, your chain's not going to get the proper lubrication and it's going to wear out prematurely. And I'm just going to slide it over top here, put the chain around the sprocket. And I'm going to install the clutch cover. Now I'm just going to put the two bar nuts on by hand. I'm not going to tighten them up yet until I've tensioned the chain properly. Now I'm just going to put the saw back upright. As you can see the chain is quite loose so I'm going to need to adjust it by using the screw in between the two nuts over here. So what I'm going to do is hold the bar upright like this as high as it can go and I'm going to turn clockwise to tighten up the chain. You're going to see it tighten up. And this is about how much tension I'm going to leave on the chain. So now what I'm going to do is hold the bar up again and tighten up the two nuts. Now with the new chain you're going to notice it turns a lot easier and you don't hear anything binding. So that's all there is to replacing the sprocket and the needle cage bearing on your MS-250. The job is done. I'm sure you guys want to see it run, so I'm going to take it outside and cut through a piece of wood. So guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in my next video.